So picking up on our list of aspects of a complex system that might indicate that you want to use agent-based modeling to understand that system, another key element that we often see is rich environments. Uh, so what I mean by that is that the environment is uh, has a lot of properties, a lot of uh, potential possibilities of interacting with the agent, or maybe defines really the way the agents interact in the first place. Um, and within agent-based modeling, the environment that the agents interact in can be extremely rich. To get a, an example, right, as two examples are social networks and geographical systems. So social networks we've seen a little bit in the past, but essentially we can describe all the ways that an agent might interact with another agent via a set of networks and links that connect one that agent to those other agents, right? Another environment that might be very rich is a geographical system or a geographic information system if you're pulling the data directly from such a device, right? And in this case, what we're talking about is the agents might actually physically be located in your model in an actual real geography. And that geography may contain a number of elements that affect agent decisions. They could be anything from elevation to whether or not there's a transportation network nearby to the school district that they're inhabiting uh, to a number of other aspects, right? And agent-based modeling really allows you to decouple the agent itself from that physical system and allow you to work uh, to examine how those systems move around or interact with each other. Um, the environment can, in fact, even have its own agent-like rules, right? You could have a farm-type environment in which the farm actually grows and things, and the crops grow, and the agent comes along and cuts the crops and stuff along those lines, in which case the, the environment itself might have prototype agent rules. It's just it can't move around, right? In many ways, um, the reason why this is very useful is that agent-based modeling is a model of process, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, whereas environmental system, the environmental data is often a model of pattern. And agent-based modeling provides a nice framework where we can meld together these models of process with this model of pattern in order to understand what's going on. So almost all agent-based models, in fact, feature time. And this is because agent-based modeling is a model process. We're talking about how agents change over time, how they interact with other agents, how they look at um, the world around them and how they make decisions based upon their past steps, right? In fact, most of the major agent-based modeling platforms out there even go so far as to define a temporal unit, often referred to as a tick, which we'll see later on, or a time step in some cases, but usually a tick. Um, and that tick indicates one discrete unit of time has passed, right? Um, and that's, that's very much a core concept within a lot of agent-based models. And in fact, I would call it a nearly necessary condition of applying agent-based modeling. There are exceptions. So for instance, I've seen some examples of solving very complex equilibrium problems, essentially using the agent-based model to solve kind of a game theoretic problem where you're trying to explore what the different possible actions an agent might take. But even in those cases, there really is kind of a notion of time. It's the notion of time where they're trying to see if I took this action, what could possibly happen? So the agents themselves are kind of exploring time in that space. As opposed to time, which is a necessary condition of most agent-based modeling approaches, adaptation is almost a sufficient condition. If the agents you want to explore feature adaptation, then there is very few other methods by which you can understand that system except through some form of agent-based modeling. Now, let's be precise about what adaptation means in this case. I don't mean that necessarily that the agent takes different actions over time. I mean that the agent takes different actions over time, even when presented with the exact same set of the world, state of the world that they had seen in the past, and that its reason for taking that new action is due to some experience it has in the past. In other words, adaptation is when an action's, a, agent's actions are contingent upon their past history within that system. An agent in this case, an agent in this case, may in fact take different actions depending upon its own past experience. 
In order to really model adaptation within an agent, you need to have a history that is followed, coming along with every agent, as well as a rule that tells how to act upon that history in the context of future events that is approached that is previously seen within that history. Very few other modeling approaches besides ABM feature adaptive individuals, and therefore this is usually a sufficient uh, condition for applying agent-based modeling. So now that we've gone through all of the six conditions, it's useful to look back at the overall list. I often suggest doing this before deciding whether or not you want to use agent-based modeling to understand a problem. The way I recommend doing this is you take these four, four um, indicators, medium numbers, heterogeneity, complex, but local interactions, and rich environments. The more of these that the system that you want to study possesses, the more likely it is that agent-based modeling is going to be useful to you. And if it violates too many of these, in other words, if the system is homogenous, it has global interactions, and has large numbers, right, um, then you might want to consider an alternative approach. On the other hand, you should also check to make sure, does the system feature time? If it doesn't, then you have to have a very good reason to justify the use of agent-based modeling. And finally, if the system contains adaptive agents, there are very few other approaches out there besides agent-based modeling uh, that will be useful for understanding that system. So given all this, I often recommend that when you start to think about whether or not I'm going to study this uh, system using an agent-based modeling approach, pull out this checklist, take a look at it, and see whether or not it meets the criteria that we've discussed.